And we're back. What's happening, people? Uh, Bobby Five back with my man, Eric Sheets Haber, who is literally fresh off the plane, has, uh, has come in to do the show. He's, he's trooping. He's battling through it. He went to work. He's coming in to do the show now. He's just got back from Singapore. Sheets, how was your little vacation here? We're, uh, we've had people literally uh, writing me every day saying, where is Sheets? Why aren't the shows happening with Sheets? What's going on? As they, as, as they said, you know, in the old jokes, I mean, I just flew back from Singapore, and boy, are my arms tired. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> It was, uh, you know, my daughter studying abroad there so for the whole semester, so we went there for seven days. And, I, you know, we're not much, as far as travelers go, we're not like the Bobby Fives that just go off all over the world, so we don't really go that many places. So this trip was, like, really, really far for us, and so it was 18-hour direct flight both ways. And I don't know if you ever saw the movie uh, Crazy Rich, Asian, Rich Asians, but, um, you know, you'll, you'll we'll appreciate all the stuff that we saw there, the different environments that we were in, and it was... Uh, it was a crazy experience, and I'll talk about it some other time, but it's, it was, it's a place unlike anything I've ever seen before. I was there for eight days, didn't see one bit of trash on the ground. I didn't see a single police officer in eight days. What I did see was, was quite a bit of screening for the coronavirus, which, I mean, literally, like the government completely took over, and they really wanted to make sure that they didn't have an ap epidemic like they had in China. So they, as you went into any public place, they required you to go through a temperature screening, like everybody to go through. And it was, um, they really were taking care of their business over there. So it's a very, very interesting. Um, uh, from a sports perspective, I was able to, I didn't do this on purpose, but I was gone during the time where there wasn't a lot of NBA. All there was was the all-star game, which I really didn't get a chance to see. I mean, I saw some highlights. It awesome, by the way. It, it, we were all wrong. We should always embrace it with the All-Star Game. When they want to do something different, it was absolutely awesome for once. I you mean, that, 20, that 24 points? Uh, Every thing single thing they did. They, the players were playing. The game was interesting. The whole weekend was good. The dunk contest was good. The three-point shootout was good. Everything was good. That's great. And, and, uh, and then on the way back, it was an 18-hour flight on the way back. I caught up on all my Oscar movies that I, I missed over the last year. So I got all my movie reviews ready to go. And then I, got, I was able to get really good internet both ways. So I was able to sweat some DFS. And uh, I missed yesterday's slate, which, uh, well, I didn't miss it, but I missed the, the analysis of it. And uh, I'm all ready to go today. You know, as I was saying, uh, my flight landed literally about 5.30 this morning. But, you know, I got like three hours of sleep on the plane. I got back home. The rest of my family went in and went to sleep. I showered, put on clothes. I had some work I had to do, so I came in here today, got some work done, and I'm, I'm completely ready to – to handle uh, for for me is is the first content after the All Star break, and I'm I'm pretty psyched for um, and like anything else, when you when you take a little bit of a break, you know, you get to start thinking about your process and things you're doing well and things you're doing poorly. A very belated congratulations, by the way, by your big hit. Uh, oh, thank um, you. Before before I left, and and the various uh, the variants that came across getting paid, which we'll talk about uh, offline a little <laughs> later, I guess. Um, but. Uh, um, you know, and I, and I thought about my process and thought about what, what I could be doing differently. And I have some thoughts on that, which we'll go over as we go through the slate, I guess. But I'm, uh, I'm ready to go for it today. Yeah, real quick, I'll just touch it on last night's slate. I, I uh, did a live QLTV show uh, yesterday, which some people got some good things out of. Um, I was not one of them. And unfortunately, I was the one running the show. So I'm glad some people got some good things out of it. We'll be, we'll be doing that at 4 Eastern again today. But I wanted to just mentioned some of the things that I had liked. I also ran really poorly at the end down the stretch in that Sixers game, even though it went into overtime. I actually lost points in overtime um, with my – oh, Shoot. My, <laughs> uh, with, with, with Levert there. Like, I don't know how he had, he had but 40 basically in three, three quarters and then ended up with, like, 39 um, through overtime. So, uh, it was weird. They sat him on the bench for a long time. So, I, I literally could have won the Monster in 100K. It looked like it was going to happen. And then next thing you know, it's a, it's a really bad, uh, bad loss night for me. So – the, the DFS, the game can fluctuate. You had the guys who ended up winning with Spencer Dinwiddie, who I think with three minutes left in the fourth quarter had, I think, 14 fantasy points. I think he ended up with 43. Uh, <laughs> so that, uh, that was just a little tilting. But you know what? On to another day. Great slate. Going to be max entering today in the smaller uh, field, smaller buy-in tournaments, and we're going to be going for some big ones too. So I'm ready to get into it. I think we should go yeah. get some games. So, uh, yeah, over. so this, this, this is the way I want to look at today's slate. So, so – um, you know, just kind of as an overview, you know, it's kind of instructive. You know, there, there are two games from which uh, a great deal of the value is going to be coming today from one for the Minnesota game and, and also obviously from the Portland game. And there's a couple of other, uh, it's an ancillary game, which we'll talk about later. But as you go through the slate, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of 
whether you want to take those value games and stack them with each other or among themselves, or do you take pieces of those and kind of then see what other games you could find kind of like one-offs that otherwise don't correlate or otherwise you might have a trouble getting in. And like, you know, if you just look to start off, I mean, like, do, do you want to, you know, run Bradley Beal with some of those value guys? Do you want to run Luca with some of those value guys? You know what I mean? Or is it better to take those, you know, those value guys and make them their own entity and just stack them among themselves? So I, I think that, you know, looking at the overview of the slate, I think that's the theme is, is how you handle the Minnesota value, how you handle the Portland value. Um, and, uh, I think that's going to be what, what's important. I totally agree. And, um, <laughs> I mean, that Portland game is going to be really interesting and really hard to stay off. Like, <laughs> it's going to be hard to stay off of for me, but we'll get to it. It's going to make yeah. the other games seem a little less interesting than maybe they would be on other slates. I just want to point that out. So, my player pool, when I went through the first, like, seven games today, is much smaller than my player pool was for all six games yesterday. Like, half. Um, because there's just so much in those later games that – that I think you want to play. So this is this is the way I, I, I'm looking at. It. So so the first game I have if you're the Cleveland Washington, right? So um, I really don't have a lot of interest in anybody in this game except for Bradley Beal, and I have a great deal of interest in him. You know what I mean? I, I think that he's in a really really great spot. He projects really well, and, and Cleveland's you know defense against his position is not good, and that's why it projects really well. And unfortunately, there's not a lot else I like on either side of the game, you know? So it's not like I want to attack the game per se. Like I don't want to necessarily run back Kevin Love or Garland or Sexton, although those are the guys I probably would run back if I did want to want to do that. But I, I think that this is one of those decisions that I just kind of alluded to before is, is maybe that I will play Beal along with some of that Phoenix, uh, Phoenix of that Portland value or, or Beal along with some of that Minnesota value. But I don't want to attack this game per se, but I do happen to like Beal in this spot. And, you know, depending on ownership, obviously, he's certainly somebody that I, I would love to be able to get. Yeah, so Beal is a guy who I've got as a high-priority guy for today. But I, unlike you, I actually do kind of like this game. Okay. Um, I, I don't really like – so here's – I think that speculative plays we should talk about and maybe – it's not exactly narratives after the All-Star break, but things sort of to look out for. Sure. Um, and maybe it didn't, you know, didn't help me much. Uh, actually, it did, it did help me with Bridges yesterday, but I didn't play enough of them. You know, he won the MVP in the rookie sophomore game, which, by the way, I was really I saw that. I saw that. Really mad at myself for not for not. I, I played those last slate. I played it, and um, I could have I could have easily. I thought about it for a while, putting it in my captain, and along with Barrett, oh. and uh, I just didn't quite pull the trigger. But anyway, but I think that Hachimura is taking a, a step. Like I really, what, what, when you watch this guy, he looks like a legitimate stud. Um, you got the break in there. He, you know, he had the, the whatever game. He, but he hasn't played, and he played 31 minutes two, uh, two games before last, and then he had a back-to-back, -back, so he only played 23 in that game against the Knicks. But I think that Hachimura's minutes at 28 projected pretty much across the industry. Um, there's definitely room for upside on that. Now, this is a, maybe a little bit of an off-the-board too-far play, but I just feel like he's got a really good chance at getting that 35 to 40 in a good environment, actually. And I think you're going to see him featured more the second half of the season. So he's a speculative play that I'm sort of interested in on, on this side. I also would think that the real wild card speculative one would be Shabazz Napier. Um, if somehow the minutes, and I think they could fluctuate just depending on how game flow goes, if he somehow got the minutes instead of Ish, he could easily like put up 30 fantasy points here. So just as the guy in wild card, large field GPPs, but mostly it's just Bradley Beal and some Hatchamora love. I do like Hatchamora. I think that you know, I had no ownership. I just feel like he could, he's a guy who, you know, we're going to at least have on the list in the 5K range of the forward spot uh, going forward. I don't think I'm going to get to Ish in myself. But I do like the other side. And I like, um, I like playing one of Sexton, Garland, or Porter. Um, I would lean with, this, with the new – like, anytime there's coaching situations that are going to be different and they say they want to play younger, um, I, 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 first of all, don't mind speculating if everyone gets scared to play Kevin Love at 7,500 in, in a great matchup. I'll take a, a weird a shot. Still got him projected at 32 minutes. He can put up 50 fantasy points in 32 minutes against this Washington team. Um, I'll take a shot on Garland, Porter. And I, Garland's the one I'm leading heaviest on because I think that in this type of environment, he's going to feel free to fire. And that's like it, – it, you're just betting on him getting hot, basically. But he has it in, a, in, in his game. I mean, he'll, he'll go out there and chuck threes when he's, when he's making them. So – 
I like Garland as expected to play. This is a, remember we, we want to attack Washington in a ceiling type matchup. It's a ceiling type matchup. And then I think that even with Drummond not playing all the minutes and everything, I might take a shot here. It's just too good of a matchup. And if the minutes somehow go his direction with the new coach, I, I just think that it's going to be hard not to – like he could put up 60 here and it just feels like silly if everyone's going to be off him. So definitely want to be ahead of the field on all those guys. Now ahead of the field might just mean 10 or 15% in some cases, but they're all guys I have interested in, in, in running it back. So where I play Beal, I'll probably have one other player from the other side in this game. Um, just because I, I like some of the run back options and I think it's worth taking that shot. Well, so not, not, to, not to look ahead too much, but I mean, if you could get into this uh, Shabazz Napier business, um, it could be a really, really sweet pivot off of uh, Anthony Simons at a similar price a little bit later if you wanted to, yeah. if you had the, if you had it in yourself to do that. Um, and uh, or you could play both. <laughs> or, or as you would say, or you could play both. I got, I have my own. Uh, idea about that that Napier about okay. that uh Simon's thing a little bit later though so um okay so so good all right so so again I, I do agree that that it's it's a game that I would love to be able to attack because it's that 236 total and yeah. it's a it's a uh you know it's a it's a semi-close spread just it seems like yeah, got, a team that plays like lightning and a team that plays slow and both are completely inept defensively and the whole yeah. space team is playing at home so they're gonna dictate tempo regardless um I mean, we'll get into some betting stuff on the BetQL show later, but I would throw out that an early bet I would be looking at is the over in that game. How's it been going over there? I guess we'll talk about it over there. But it's, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been good, man. It's, we're getting more and more people. It's just, it's, it just started, obviously, but, like, we're getting going. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so so likewise, so, so, so Dallas and Orlando, right? So in and of itself, you know, as usual, Orlando just breeds games that, do not have a lot of fantasy goodness in them, either from their side or from the play, play, team playing against them. And today's no exception. Um, but what I would do, what I would say is 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 keeping in line with the theme I was uh, alluding to earlier. I mean, if you wanted to go play Luca at ten six, um, you know, I don't think any matchup is or any pace is going to stop him from getting his. So I have no problem playing him again. You know, alongside of some of this Minnesota. Um, Portland uh, value or others that could come up. So I do think that someone like a Beal or a Luca um, on their own could probably fit, you know, again, it depends on how you want to attack those, those later value games. But I think you could, you could play a couple of go guys in that game and be able to play Luca, I guess, pretty easily, actually. I don't have any projections of ownership yet, but I'm just going to guess that Luca is going to be way under owned today. Um, not, I don't. I wouldn't think on Fanduel, but maybe on DraftKings. Not on Fanduel, but I don't know. I mean, if yeah. he is going to be, it's a huge mistake. Like, so as much as I like Beal, I liked Luca better. Um, and I know they're different prices, but I would rather yeah. spend money for Luca. It, you think about the way. Think about it like this: like you're going to get ceiling games out of guys because of environment and because when they need you to win games. This is a tough matchup, actually. The Magic at home are tough, and defensively they're tough. That just means more Luca and Porzingis to me. I mean, I, I really think it's all we see in this. And I think that both are in play, and I think Luca's the, the much, much better of the plays. I think we're going to be able to afford him with the value that's up, up coming up later. I don't think you need to run it back if you play just Luca. I think you, you could – if you wanted to play both of them together, which I wouldn't suggest in this slate, I mean, it's actually not bad. I mean, then you run back Vucevic. You have to do it, basically, in my opinion. I wouldn't just play the two of them and nothing from Orlando. But – I think this game is pretty simple. It's just give me the Luca and then a little Porzingis and move on. Yeah. You know, it's when you talk about ownership projections again, I always thought about this. I wonder if, if ownership projections actually equal one. I mean, they should, but they don't. You know, I just know that they just don't. And, and I think one of the things that, that you might be wrong about is the fact that I think that – I don't think you can have it both ways. Like these, these cheaper value guys – you can't have them be that high owned without them being having studs high owned too. Because the reason why the value guys are gonna the cheap value guys are gonna be high owned is because it will allow you to get these studs in. But the thing is that the value today is not that cheap. You know what I mean? Like like yeah, you have Simon's at thirty five hundred, but a lot of the really really great plays are not necessarily thirty five hundred values. There's really strong five Ks and and sixty five hundreds and guys like that. So I actually so, look at getting overlooked a little bit more. And, yeah. the, the, and also, you know what I'm looking at, the projections? 
it feels weird to me that he and LeBron would ever just have the same base projection. Because I just – like, Luca's number – the only reason that he's not astronomically ahead of these guys and what he scores fantasy points per game is, first of all, they get into a lot of blowouts, which is – I know that's funny, but, like, they blow a lot of people out. He's been hurt, and he's been coming back and forth from injury. He now has the all-star break. He's rested. His minutes are going to go up to probably 34 to 36 now. I, I just think he's the better play of all the spend-ups in, in the NBA, basically, at this point. And – People are going to play the other ones. I just think he's the best one on an every night basis. Like he's going to put up, is he ever going to put up less than 50 if the game's close? Is he ever going to put up less than like 60? It feels like, I mean, it just feels like he's too cheap. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you as far as he's the most reliable because I was, I was, I forgot to mention uh, uh, something about yesterday. How freaking good is Giannis? I mean, like, oh, yeah. He's so sick. I mean, like, it doesn't matter whether he plays 26 minutes or 29 minutes. He had, like, 48 fantasy points and a half or something like that. It just doesn't matter. I mean, you just – it's, it's just ridiculous. But, um, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm with you. I mean, if, if you could get Luka, you know, cheap, needing, you know, 10 – even 15 percent is fine. I mean, I would take that also, I think. Um, I'm like, I'm, I'm way over the field on Luka, but that's that's pretty much it for me on this. Let's, let's move on to the other one. To the, what do yeah, you guys think? All right, so uh, the next one I have is, is Phoenix-Toronto. And this was um, – I wanted to play a little more of this game. I just couldn't quite make the cut. Like, I, I, I happen to like Booker and on, on the Phoenix side. And so I, I was starting with that. And then the next guys I would, I would look at on Phoenix would be way, way down on the list for me, like you know, Oubre or, or even Rubio. And I, I, boy, I wish eight were just a little, little cheaper because I think he could probably do some, do some business here. But it's just nine K is just kind of rough. He's not going to project all that well at nine K, and I don't know. I really don't know what he's getting in this. Uh, what his ceiling is at a nine K price. But um, on the Toronto side, Ibaka again is going to look to be a, like a very, very strong play. And then you have Lowry, and he's kind of not that exciting you know what I mean like so so I'm not that thrilled about this game I, I, I do happen to like Booker he's one of my favorite plays I guess on the slate if you want to if you want to just take a one-off like that and again like I said I mean if you want to put him in by himself with some of these other value guys you can certainly get away with it or if you want to take one of these Toronto guys you want to play him with Lowry or play him with Ibaki even just you know just have multiple exposures from the games that's certainly fine I didn't get to Van Vliet as one of my favorites, so I'll leave that to you to talk about. And I, I didn't think this was the time to play Siakam, um, but for me, I guess Booker would be the, the the best play from this game, and I could take him or leave him. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm trying to jam him in, but he's definitely on my short list of players to put in my player pool. How about that? Yeah, it's going to be a nerve-wracking game if you fade just to because, of the you know, they're – I, I think somebody has a big game here. It's going to be a really good pace thing. I, my, my priority play from this game is Serge Ibaka. Um, I think 6,500 is too cheap, and I like the matchup a lot. The Suns' numbers versus big men, and I heard them talking about it on other shows today. They, people are getting it all wrong. Like, they, they keep talking about how Aiton's improved his defense. No, their defense is – the defense looks better because Aaron Baines was the center for half the year. Not, it's not DeAndre Aiton. Um, they're they're, they're going to get – I mean, he should be able to – this should be like a 40 and – a 40 just in his sleep in this kind of a matchup in a, in a close game. The, it, I mean, if you don't play, like, I really do like playing one of like Serge or get with running it back with just Booker, or maybe I actually do kind of like Siakam. I don't generally go for Siakam uh, uh, and the Baca builds together, but if you wanted to do it, I think you could do it tonight. This is going to be a good game environment. that's going to be overlooked. I think Ibaka is the priority. And then it's probably worth noting that Kyle Lowry probably, again, won't be very high owned. And he just keeps putting up 50 and he's not even shooting the ball. Like, it's bizarre. Like, maybe, like, don't, don't, if you're playing a lot of lineups, you absolutely should have some exposure to Lowry. But I'm not really, like, heavy on it. If you're playing one, if you're playing, like, if you're playing three lineups, the one guy I would make sure that I had in one would be Ibaka. Everybody else, Ananubi included. I think you can make arguments in large field things, but I don't really want to get crazy with it. And then Booker is a guy who I do think you want, like, want to be in the 20 plus percent of, just because at this price, he could really just break a tournament open for you. But at the same time, it's not like an ideal matchup, although the pace is good. I'm sort of like wishy washy on it, but it feels like a 20% range for me. Yeah, but uh, I'll live with that. Yeah. 
All right. Um, Indiana, New York, I have a couple of opinions here. I really don't want to play much anybody from the game, but if, if I if I had to play somebody, so I guess – I, I guess I'll, I'll leave you guys to watch the DraftKings and then the FanDuel video after this. But but um, but Victor Oladipo, I'm probably going to have zero on on DraftKings or probably 100% on on FanDuel. So um, it's uh, I'll just leave it at that. I think he's like two cents on FanDuel and like two thousand dollars on on DraftKings. I don't, I don't know what's going on over there. Um, I guess if I had to take an Indiana guy, I'd probably take Brogdon. I suppose 6,600. It's not too exciting for me, but that's who I would take. Um, and I'm really not interested in the Knicks. I mean, Randall, be, whatever. I mean, just he's just fine. I mean, it's a tough matchup, and uh, um, I'm just not too interested. I, I probably prefer to just cross the game off, play well Depot on FanDuel, and just be done with it. I hear you. Um, I, uh, I like all the Depot. <laughs> on DraftKings? Yeah, I think that. So just picture coming into the year, it's the first game of the year, and Oladipo is 6,400 against the Knicks. We would be locking him in. But because – and, I, look, he's been terrible. There's reason to be – but he did just get the break. I'm assuming he's gotten back into playing shape even more. Um, he's been awful, but other than two games, he really chucked a ton. Um, I, I think that there's absolutely room for upside here. So he's the guy who I would make – you know, a tournament play here that I just think is a bold move that no one's going to do. I mean, the only issue is the guard spots are valuable. And even if he has a good game and gets to 40, is that like enough for you to feel great about? I don't even know. So that's why I would ignore Brogdon. I still think there's room for all the people to get higher than that, but I just think maybe it's asking a little bit too much. Um, But I, I mean, pretty soon he's going to be a guy who's scoring 40 a night regularly, I think. So, it's a guy. It's a spot I'd like to take advantage of. I, I don't know where I, right now. I've got him at fifteen to twenty percent. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty big on DraftKings. I, I I could see myself going higher or or lower depending on. Hey, when you when you got a guy at the same the same position at, at pretty much the same price, projecting for literally twenty points higher than he has, it's going to be like seventy percent old. Right. Who are we? Who am I? Who, who, remind me. Who am I missing? Here? McCollum. Oh, McCollum. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. said who's going to be who's going to be seventy percent old. Yeah, exactly. I mean? like yeah. It's, uh, no, you're right. Uh, boy, if you get away with it, man, you'd be a freaking hero. <laughs> See, um, okay, so I guess moving moving on. Anything else in this game? You you uh, you're throwing your uh, no, I mean, like throwing you your token, to your token, uh, token Mitchell Robinson exposure, or no? If you want to throw in uh, Mitchell Robinson or Julius Randle, that's fine with me. I also want to point out that I, I would be ready for a big second half overall from R.J. Barrett. I don't like this matchup, but. I believe in R.J. Barrett more than most people do. Um, I just think he's a good basketball player who's finding his way a little bit. He's young. I mean, give him a break. So, but he's also uh, – he's all, as he creeps cheaper, I can see one of those 50 fantasy point games is going to come out of nowhere. So just keep in mind, in mind for tournaments in general, but not today. Okay. Um, I, have to, I have to admit that in the Denver OKC game, yeah. At first look, I just wasn't I, I was just gonna cross the whole game off. I'm looking, I'm like, I didn't really want didn't want to play anybody from Denver. And then all the OKC guys look the same thing as they always do. They all look like pretty decent values and you just just kind of just for whatever reason, they're never playing anybody that you want to play them against for some reason. I guess that's why they're 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 looking cheap. Um I, I guess though, before I cross this game off, Nerlens Noel is three K. I mean, he's literally three thousand. I think there's a I think there's a lot of ways where, um, where you'd be very happy playing him at three thousand. Uh, you know, Stephen Adams. Does, you know, I don't know, man. Um, he could get into foul trouble against Jokic. Um, I don't know. I was I was gonna really just breeze right past it, and then I just I just saw him there at three K, and I'm like, God. Ah, I'm going to try it, I think. He's going to be in a couple of lineups, I'll say that. And the other guys, again, in Oklahoma City, I just, I'm not even repeating this. Normal the five starters that are always look to be like kind of decent values in slow-paced games that just never seem to win GPPs for me or anybody. Um, so that, that's, I guess, my only opinion on the whole game. Yeah, I like the, the – I like uh, 
I, I like uh, <laughs> I like the prices of the Oklahoma City guys, but I don't really yeah. like the situation for anybody. Um, I think that honestly, like the best play may be like Gallinari. Right. Um, Terrific. The forward eligibility because with Shea, you get the same issue that I run into that, that I feel with Oladipo. Again, we're talking about guard exposure, same price again. I mean, maybe you do that. Maybe, maybe for yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Obviously, on one lineup, I'm going to just mess around and throw Shea, uh, Oladipo, and McCollum in the same lineup. Um, right. But the, I, I like Chris Paul. Like they're all fine. It should be a competitive game. I like Chris Paul in competitive games. Um, he, all of these guys, I think. I have it, some interest in just nobody where I want to get heavy on, including Noel. I just large field mostly for me. It sucks because I really do. I like, I like Will Barton a lot tonight. Um, oh yeah. And I think that at five, three, it's just kind of a joke. Like we got to give him a shot if he's assuming that he's, that he's good to go, which it looks like he's going to be. Um, so I really like Will Barton. He's going to be the priority. Jokic. What, what, what's, so you know what Jokic averaged last month? I think he averaged 29, 12 and seven. And the first, like, two months of the season, he was averaging, like, 16, 5 and something. Uh, 16, uh, 9 and 5 or something. I don't remember what it was back then. But, but as you see, it, you can easily follow Jokic's game log. When Millsap comes back, when Barton comes back, all of a sudden the numbers aren't quite as big as they were just before. And not that he can't still put up a big game, but that's why you don't want to – we like him with, with all those other guys gone, not, not so much with these guys in. What just happened that made Dennis Smith jump off the thing? Alfred Payton out. Wayne Ellington available. Okay. Well, we'll have to revisit the Knicks uh, at the end of the show. Oh, uh, they uh, they announced that uh, Peyton was going to be out. Yeah. And is Dennis Smith Jr. Didn't ne necessarily going to be starting? No. <laughs> we'll yeah, figure so it out. We'll get back to it in a minute. I want to get some. Yeah, that's no, that's no problem. All right. Um. Uh, okay. So, um, so the next game is to me is is one of the one of the key games on the slate. Um, no surprise uh, to anybody, is uh, Boston against uh, Mi uh, Minnesota. Still no Kemba Walker for Boston and still no Cat for Minnesota. So you have all these guys just kind of popping here. So, um, you know, you'll see, by the way, what I did with just these builds to make myself remember is like this, this lineup is just literally all Minnesota-Boston guys. The only reason I couldn't do all is because DraftKings makes you – play more for more than one team. So I, so I happen to have Ingles throw it. We happen to like, so we'll get to Ingles later anyway. Um, but um, it just reminded me to talk about all these Minnesota, this, all these Minnesota guys. So first of all, from the Boston side, um, the, the, the usual four guys for me, uh, Tatum, Brown, Hayward, and your man, and Smart. I mean, all four of those guys I think are just great. Um, I actually put all four of them in this lineup just to, just to kind of just remind myself to talk about it. I don't know if I put all four of them in, but could certainly make an argument for it. They all look to be really, really strong. You get that extra hashtag Bobby five Minnesota boost. Um, so I think it's tremendous play to play any or all of these Boston guys. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to the, the Tice Cantor thing, although, um, you know, they're both pretty cheap. Uh, Cantor 3,700 is pretty uh, interesting. I don't know if they're going to even need him in this game with, um, with Cat out, though, so I don't know if I'm going to get there. And then on the Minnesota side, um, I just want to make sure I, I handled everybody in my lineup here. So, yeah, D'Angelo Russell, uh, Beasley, James Johnson would be my three favorites. And the one guy I didn't have in here, which I do – who I do like is, uh, is Hernan Gomez. Um, he'll play a bunch of minutes also. So I would, I would include him as these Minnesota guys, and I, I could play – I could really stack this game up if I really wanted to and, and, and feel really, really comfortable with it. Um, I don't – I'm not too afraid of Naz Reed. I'm not too afraid of Culver. Culver just played himself right out of the rotation. I, I thought he was going to be like a star on this team like three weeks ago. And all of a sudden he's, I, he's just done, I think. I don't know for the – I don't know. Yeah, I think he hit the rookie wall. Happened yeah, there. I guess so. And a Kogi, I guess. But, but I, I, would, I would stick to Beasley and Russell and James Johnson and Hernan Gomez. and can play two of those, three of those. I bet you there are variations where I can play four of them. Um, and Boston, I could play two, three, you know, whatever. And I don't even have to prioritize. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll just multiple lineups with, with, with each of these combinations. And I think this is uh, kind of a premier value spot of the day, this, this whole game. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
And, and and what's great about it is I think that there's a good chance that this game actually could stay close and you could get a lot out of it. I, I find myself like I, I have a mild interest in, in D'Angelo Russell, but like I'm not really that's not really where I'm looking at this game. I think that my highest level of interest is with Brown and Tatum. Um, Tatum obviously going to be the chalkiest one. Brown will be a little bit less on. I also really like Marcus Smart. Uh, and I just think he always ends up being a little bit more overlooked in these spots. I also think people will be afraid of, of Hayward's price a little bit, so he won't get as much ownership as – so I'll, I want to be ahead of the field on all those guys. Uh, I like taking a shot on Cantor when he's this cheap and in a great matchup, but there's a lot of other good plays, so you have to sort of prioritize. And I think Tice is reasonable. So the, if I'm looking at it from – I'm going to probably have at least Celtic on every team, but I, I think that T Tatum and Brown – I mean – also, with Brown, you get, like, a tough the tough guy who's also, like, you know, he got the all-star snub. He can – has a little extra motivation, maybe. Uh, I, I really, really like him here. So, I, I like those guys. I like running it back, too. I like I like making a little mini stack with, uh, with Beasley or Wancho. I would prefer Beasley over Wancho. Um, Beasley, I think there's a lot of room for him, even at this price. I don't think people realize how good – he is, and I, I think it's nerve-wracking with James Johnson because I want to play him if we really think he's going to play 30 minutes. But I don't know that they're going to just turn it over to him. So I would probably uh, just encourage – well, I'm going to make sure myself to get some Nas Reed exposure. Um, I just could see it turning that way. I really could. And um, the one thing that you should be a little bit aware of, they have a lot of guards uh, uh, available. I do think I'll take a shot with Culver, partly because what I said about the, the rookie wall. I think there's an outside chance if he's playing well, he could get more run. I don't think they have like a, a, a solid five that they know they're going with tonight. And I'm just interested to see if he can get some of those, those minutes back because at 3.4, I mean, even in the minutes he's going to play, he's already doesn't need to do that much for you and no one's going to play him. So I, I think Culver's kind of an interesting. Also, he's, uh, he's got forward eligibility, which I like. So, uh, sure. you know, we have all these guard, we have the guard values and I just, I think he's the, he's the forward guy. Yeah, so that's that's a really um, – I mean, I really think that's a really uh, – again, I'll just reiterate. I think that's one of the two premier games to to to, to go after. I'm going to have – I'm going to have somebody from this game. <laughs> I'm going to have somebody from this game in every lineup for sure. I might end up having two two people from this game in every lineup, and I might run some some full stacks of this game also. Absolutely. One and make or two you can play to at 36 if you want to get – like he's going to play 25-plus minutes, I think. Um, I would prefer Marcus Smart, yep. but like I know you're obviously different prices, but I think it's going to go Smart will get more of the run. But Wanamaker every now and then will play those 30 minutes in these spots, and if that happens, like at 36, we definitely want exposure in this perfect game type of uh, for him. Okay, so the, the next game that we get to is 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 kind of kind of I don't know if it's going to say sneaky, but it, I think this is this the sneaky game for me. So uh, the, the, the obvious games to me are those, the Portland-New Orleans games we'll get to, the Minnesota-Boston game. And, and, and this game, I don't know where the ownership's going to come in on this, but, but you know, I really like this. I, I, I like the guys on Utah, and I like the main three guys on, on uh, San Antonio. I, I do like um, D'Angelo Russell here, and I also like um, LaMarcus Aldridge, even though I, know I don't usually like him. Russell? Uh, sorry, uh, DeMar DeRozan. Okay. Um, I like DeMar DeRozan at 6,800, and I like LaMarcus Aldridge, even though I don't usually like those guys. But, um, you know, even though Conley's not playing, um, which obviously, as, you, as you've been so perfectly on, you know, while they're not as bad defensively without Conley, without Conley there, I still think that they're, you know, overrated <laughs> still. Um, and I think that San Antonio could put up points in this game. And I think all these Utah guys – are, are priced re really, really low. I think I, – I, I have a feeling these guys are going to have to be popular, some of these price tags. But, I mean, Mitchell at 6,900 and Ingles at 4,700 with Conley out, to me is uh, it's kind of like so, – if I have to say it, like kind of a premier value play if you want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, I, Royce O'Neal at 3,300. Gonna, you know, he was going to probably get minutes even if Conley wasn't playing. Can I just say one thing about Royce O'Neal, though? Like, I just I, – you know me. I, I've always talked about this. We, we, we always play Royce O'Neal in these big slates, or, or I often talk about it, because it's a guy you know is going to get the minutes who everyone sort of overlooks because the other obvious screaming value. But why tonight is everyone – and, like, even the projections are higher on it. Like, nothing's really all that different for him. Like, it's not like he, every time Conley's out, he thrives. 
I mean, I, mean, well, I, 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 I didn't know he was. I didn't know he was popular. I didn't know that he was. Uh, I just think that it's, he's popping a lot, and he never does. Uh-huh. It's just weird. Yeah. So, so the only two guys I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go for my again. They they overpriced him. Uh, I'm not gonna go to my, to Clarkson, um, who I've gone to before. Yeah, forty two hundred. <laughs> um, at fifty four hundred, I don't think I'm gonna go there. Uh, the other guy I'm just not gonna play because I'm just never playing. I I don't play Bojan. It's just it's just, mm-hmm. it's just not happening for me. So, uh, but I have I have no problem with with. I mean, like you see, one of my one of my builds here just to remind myself is just just piling on all these guys. You know, I'm not gonna play obviously four Utahs and you know whatever, but but all these guys look to be like really really good plays. So so uh, I think that if you go a two by two, like you play the two main guys from San Antonio and and two the main guys from Utah, and if too much ownership goes to some of these other games and you know, then or or defaults to Beal and Luca and whatever it is is um maybe maybe this could be kind of that sneaky game stack that uh, that that blows up for you. I think it's interesting. Um, I, I like a lot of that. What you said. I mean, the pricing makes it really hard not to want to take shots on DeRozan, especially for me. He's the one I would probably prioritize the highest in this game, followed by Mitchell. Um, and then and then it would be Mitchell Mitchell and Ingles that would give out the same rating too. A little bit of Gobert. Um, you could play roulette with the with point guards for San Antonio, but I, I don't no, feel like I need to do no it. Thanks. <laughs> I don't feel like it's the right slate for me to do it. But I, I, if I end up with, you know, a lineup out of 150 with with Forbes or Murray or White or this, I'm probably gonna, that's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's nothing I really want to go crazy on. I just uh, I think it does make sense as a stack with just the big guys because they're cheap. But it's just about prioritizing versus the games we have coming up, or the games yep. we have coming up. I should say. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, let let let's get to it. So, um, New Orleans uh, against Portland. So I actually do have a pretty strong opinion on this. So, uh, with Lillard out, the uh, very the very obvious plays. The uh, the very obvious plays is is going to be C.J. McCollum. He's going to rate to be the best play on the slate. Um, no matter where you look, and I can certainly understand why that is. And uh, at, at X amount of ownership, I do, I'm going to find it very difficult to fade. Okay, so so where to me it gets interesting is is underneath that. So all these guys are have to get big usage bumps because you know that's that's part of what's happened since Lillard's kind of been in you know kind of a different level the last like month or so. It means he's taken up a lot of usage, and now that when he's out, it has that much more of an effect on everybody else. So so McCollum for sure, and it becomes a question of which of these other guys do you do you have to play because they're all going to be high owned. So the the most obvious one is going to be Anthony Simons at thirty five hundred, who's going to be kind of a direct, you know what I mean? Like he's probably going to get the start and he's going to get thirty plus minutes at either a point guard or a shooting guard role, depending on what they do with McCollum, and and. I, I, I'm going to probably go another way. Um, so I'll get to that in a second. The other guys who are going to pick up usage is obviously going to be Carmelo at 5,300. He's going to project to be a really, really strong value. And I certainly have no problem playing him. Um, and then, you know, white side, I probably wasn't going to play anyway. Uh, if they try to make him more popular because of, of Lillard being out, I, I, don't see much of a benefit for him. You know what I mean? I, I guess you have a little bit of a benefit with him being out, but I, I'm really not going to go for Whiteside today. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. So the, what, what remains is the two guys, one of them I'm interested in. One guy that remains is Trevor Ariza, who's been very, very solid anyway. So he's going to be fine. But I'm going to tell you, instead of Anthony Simons, I, I remember all these other times I played Anthony Simons in situations like this. I ended up getting just like roasted by Gary Trent, and I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go the other way this time. I think I'm gonna pay the extra the extra thousand or whatever for Gary Trent, take one fifth of the ownership of Anthony Simons, and just maybe I'll be the one laughing when people are seventy percent Anthony Simons and he can't do anything this time, and Gary Trent continues to play his thirty plus minutes and pretty much has been outplaying him the whole freaking season. So. Again, it depends on how ownership kind of shakes out, but if it goes to where I think, where, where Simons is going to be just huge, huge chalk, um, I have no problem pivoting to, to Gary Trent in the same game out of that. Um, just, you know, just from what I've seen in the past, 
when, when this exact thing has happened, I have just no problem trying it. Um, am I going to go 0% Anthony Simons? Uh, depends how many lineups I play, I guess. But, yeah, certainly if he's going to be on the court for 30 minutes at 3,500, yeah, it's going to be tough to fade. But um, I, 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 at GPP, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take a shot with Trent as a pivot off of him. Yeah, I like, I like the idea of Trent as a pivot off of him for sure. I, I just want to point out that Trent's game's big – I mean, I, he's not going to be owned, so it doesn't matter. So we can play him just hoping that he has a big upside game. But have come when he's hit like five out of seven threes, six out of seven threes. Um, a little bit needs to you – know, some things happen, it feels like. But I guess he could do enough, especially without McCollum – I'm sorry, without uh, Lillard. I actually do have a little bit of interest in Whiteside. Now, what happened when these two teams played last time is Whiteside was getting sort of played off the court, and they were playing better without him. But he was actually smashing his numbers, and he was also getting smashed by Zion on the other side. Um, I have some interest here because I think that they're going to – they're obviously going to be able to play a little slower without Lillard. Um, I, I just think that this is a spot where I could see Whiteside really having a big one. I don't think he's going to have too crazy of ownership. And he's like the least owned of the of the main guys that will will run offense through over here. I'm gonna be half the half of my lineups are gonna probably have McCollum, Simons, and more possibly. I think I'd be more in the 30 percent range on Carmelo myself. Um, I'm okay with taking that, you know, maybe a little bit of a fade. I, I might get a little bit higher on it depending on how much of New Orleans I want to play, and that's what I'm sort of trying to figure out where I, where I am right now on that because I really think that dictates a lot. Like no one's gonna play the other side of this game because. It's weird, oh, yeah. <laughs> except, for, except for Ingram. Um, and Ingram is, is, the, is the best play, in my opinion, on the other side of this game. But I think everybody is extremely, is extremely in play, including Zion at, at 8K, which I'm telling you, he's a 9K player. Um, we're going to see 40s out of – I've said 50s out of him so much of the time. And he just put up what, what against these guys, like 50? Um, I don't really see why that should change. And that was a blowout. Oh. He missed his last run. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in on, I'm in on Zion, but mostly I'm in on Ingram, Holiday, um, less interested in Lonzo, but definitely going to have a little bit of them. Yeah, I had, I had three, three, uh, Saints, I, I had three Pellants, I like, I like Zion and Ingram is clearly my top two, and then, um, and then Holiday, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. So, it wasn't too long ago, like a week or two ago, where I was, you know, we had this discussion over whether to play Lillard in this spot. And uh, I said, I thought I could get him at 10%. And you're like, listen, before you, you know, you go do that, you know, Drew is a tremendous defender and he has, can really has a habit of shutting down Lillard. And, and he really did. And it wasn't just him also, you know, Lonzo was helping. They're really committed to taking him out of the game. You know, at 70% ownership, what's to say that they don't do the same thing with McCollum today? It, well, first of all, McCollum is completely different than Lillard. Nobody moves in basketball more without the ball than McCollum. Maybe because uh, uh, Ingram's back, they would have Drew chase him absolutely everywhere. That's a lot of work. Um, it's a different type of work, too. Drew, Drew shuts down Lillard, who's on the ball. Like, that's different. It's a little bit of a different type of defense than chasing around a guy who basically is like a J.J. Redick on, stair, on, a, like on speed or something, you know, just running around screens all day long. So we don't think McCollum's just going to take the point guard position? It'll be a combination of he and Simon. They love to run him off to action. He'll have the ball at the top of the key a lot too, but I don't see him and Whiteside pick and roll being their best option. So I do think he'll still play off ball a little bit um, with Simon's having some of the ball handling duties. But you're right. They could do that, but he's still so cheap. And at 66, it's hard to, to just argue for the full-on trade. I'm arguing to, to play more with the field on Simon's and McCollum, but um, I certainly understand the pivots. I just – it feels maybe a little bit too cute, and I feel like there's other spots we can get different. So I don't think I, – I think I can be at least, you know, with the chalk for now. I don't know if I'll get above 70%, but I'll probably be in the 50% range on each of those guys. Um, looking for pivots, man. There's going to be other news throughout the day. Um, speaking of which, before we get out of here, we should get to the Knicks real quick. I don't think that really affects anything is, is sort of my, my sum up for what happened. I think that if you wanted to take a shot on Dennis Smith Jr., um, be my guess, but I don't think this is the right slate to do it. I, I do think that it would, it would make – it makes Barrett a stronger play. I just don't think I'm, I like the matchup enough to go for it. But I do think Barrett's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but, but before we get to the last game, which remember the New Orleans-Portland, I, I, I regard this as 
again, is a game that you could either, like I said, take guys one or two and just, you know, filter them with other stacks or take one or two, you know, or, or stack the whole game up, you know, and, and you can make like little tiny pivots even within this game. Like if you just go Trent for Simons, for example, you know what I mean? You're already like, uh, like doing something kind of funny, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and um, so uh, you don't have to do full on fades of McCollum and Simons to, you know what I mean? <laughs> to, 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 to be different. And uh, right. like, like we said, I mean, the projections in basketball are, you know, a little more reliable than in some of the other sports. So there's a reason why that McCollum is going to be really high owned. He's, he just takes up so much of that, of that, of that lower usage that it's just, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to fade him. That's all. I totally agree. Um, all right. So, so, so we got one more. So, so Memphis, um, so Memphis against LA. Um, I did have an opinion on this. So you too. I've got a very strong opinion on this one. Yeah. Um, but mine is a little weird. So my my favorite play from this game is actually, I guess, I won't say my favorite, but where I'm finding to get exposure from this game is more on FanDuel. Um, I, I, I like Dwight Howard. <laughs> He's like, I like Dwight Howard from the Lakers uh, in this spot. Um, I think him at 4,400 is, is, is probably my favorite Laker. I, I, don't, I don't know. I can't decide between LeBron and Davis who I like. And they look, they both look like really, really strong plays. I'm not to tell you. So I'm going to let you tell me which one of them to pick. But kind of my off the board, I was off the board, my kind of guy I was looking at was Dwight Howard. Um, on Memphis, um, as usual, my usual comment, they all look terrible uh, as far as projection goes. So you have to pick the guys with the upside. And, and you know, the other day, Moran, did Moran even get 10 fantasy points the other day? I mean, he was yeah, really, terrible. really bad. So maybe this is the time to come back to him. Or you could go look and we could, talking about the Lakers playing big, maybe this is the game where they really need uh, Valanciunas to, to play those minutes at 6,700. You know the ceiling that he has. So um, I guess it, I'm nothing fancy. I guess those would be the two guys I would look at for, is Morant and Valanciunas. But I don't know if I could do it. There's so many other got players we talked about who I think might be better plays. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? You have a strong take on this game. What do you like? I think that the Lakers are going to absolutely destroy them. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. I just don't think this game is going to be close. I would give the – I don't like giving double digits in the modern NBA, but I would give the points and just bet the Lakers just absolutely hammer them. You're going to play a back-to-back -back after that game in Sacramento last night and try and come to a rested Lakers team. It's going to be really, really tough. Um, I, I – I just don't see them don't don't see this game being all that competitive. Uh, it feels like a, a game where you want to take a, a million to one shot on a guy like Josh Jackson or something. Um, who, by the way, played pretty well last night. Danny Melton only played 23 minutes last night. He had 41 fantasy points. Um, those are where I would look if I was looking at anything. I, I just don't really want to touch most of this game. On the Lakers side of it, I agree that they look like good plays. LeBron and Davis, I would prefer Davis. Um, just with a discount, I guess. And that's basically, but I don't really love, like, I, I might change my mind on this later if they really aren't, if they end up being unknown, but at reasonably high ownership, when I can get, let me see what I've got here. I can get a guy in Luca at lower ownership than either of those guys. It just feels like the wrong play to me. Um, especially. Uh, I, 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 I don't know, man. It's, it, it, it doesn't seem that, that long ago that, uh, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Fi, Mr. Firestone, had a, a very much ignored LeBron James as a late night hammer. You know who else I had in that in that lineup? Luca. There, there you have it. So, and Luca put up sixty one, and it would have been a lot more, but they blew him out. Uh, there you um, have it. So, so, I mean, they're both awesome. Like, but that was a game where LeBron was playing dead. You know my theory with LeBron: I play him when he plays the tough matchups. That's when they need him. That's when he shows up. Um, he plays well the rest of the time, but they don't, you know, well to 45 fantasy points, not 70. Um, I, I'm, 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 edgy, I'm going with Luca. In fact, now that I see the first projections, I'm, I'm putting Luca in as I think my priority play of all the spend ups, especially because I don't see anyone else writing or talking about him. And I just, people who look at Matt, they, in my opinion, here's what I want to make a point about overall tournaments people don't understand how to assess DFS matchups right. They see somebody's playing Atlanta 
like Chris Paul or something, let's take for example, and it's in, it's in OKC. That is not a good matchup for Chris Paul because your, his ceiling is somewhat limited. Do likely, in part, li likely to blow out, likely to pace that he's – it's not like he thrives that pace and they'll win without him anyway. Um, there, you want him in the tough matchups, the grinded out ones. You want LeBron in the games against uh, Denver who's pushing them to, for the one seed. That's when you want him. You don't want these guys – and with Luka, they need it, they've been losing. They need to start winning. They're on the road in Orlando, a tough defensive team, sure, but do it – does it really matter with Luka? Like, he's going to create dictate pace. He's going to do whatever he does. The, the, the Mavs are the – what are they, second highest scoring team in the NBA? They're going to keep going out there and chucking, and, like, Luca is going to be – it's going to be all Luca and Porzingis. Anyway, I'm selling myself on this one even more as I talk about it. So, Cheats, why don't you name some of your favorites, and then I'm going to go to the, my highest on players. Yeah, I'll tell you who my not my favorite is. Um, if Frank Nicolina works up to be chalk, um, I, I don't think I'm – I think it's going to be one of my fades. Uh, uh, that, that my, my, this is the initial popping that I see coming from this, from this Knicks news is that Frank Nicolina 3,100 on DraftKings is going to be the one that people uh, kind of gravitate to. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, just if you're going to play that situation, play RJ Barrett. And I mean, unless you really are going with this ultimate pay all the way down at every point guard, at every guard spot, which is one way to play tonight, because you could do that and then play like three of the stud, like a Luka at small forward and maybe a Davis at power forward or something like that. Um, oof. I don't yeah, think I'll, I'll tell you, my, 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 my views on this slate before you go to your ownerships again, it's, it's just, to me, it's a very, I want to say straightforward. I think the decisions are very straightforward to me. You know, whether, because I know that the games I'm interested in, the Boston, Minnesota, and the Portland, Utah game, and then secondarily that San Antonio, Utah game, I'll probably do a couple lineups, full stacking those. And then the other, the other ways I'll, I'll do it is picking individual values from those games and then playing guys like Luca and Beal and, and Booker you know, that, that are just kind of one-offs that are really, really good plays from those other games. Maybe even throw in like a, like a LeBron or somebody like that late. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, think that, I think that my approach to this slate is, is, pretty, is pretty easy for me. You know, whether it works or not is whatever. But, and I do have my little pivots. You know, I, I'm kind of into my Trent over Simons thing. And, again, the good thing, I don't need to have that much of it. You know what I mean? I don't need to go 100% Trent okay. to get what I need. You know what I mean? I could go – I can still go 60%. I can go 50% Simons. You know what I mean? And still be below the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just want to point out that Devin Booker is going to be way under owned tonight. I, so? I just think – yeah, I, I'm looking – the more I go through it, just, just something to be worth noting because anytime that happens with him, it just feels like, okay, well, we're giving up like a likely 45 to 50, you know, and with upside. Just, just, worth, just wanted to mention that one real quick. So you want to go through your uh, – Yeah, let's do my thing. So, so basically in my top tier, I have the same rough ownerships early in the day, Anthony Simons, C.J. McCollum, and Luca. Um, Luca is just a straight, just a, I love just Luca. Like that's, I don't, I wish I had somebody I wanted to run back with him because it would make me like, like this even better. The next tier I have is just Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Then the next tier below that is a few guys, uh, Bradley Beal, Serge Ibaka, Brandon Ingram, and Carmelo. Um, and just beneath them is my bigger group, which is uh, Beasley, DeRozan, Will Barton, James Johnson, Darius Garland, Joe Ingles, Marcus Smart and uh, Shea Gildas-Alexander. Oh, and- You know what, you, you know what you're, draw, you're, you're drawing me to this, um, this Cleveland game a little bit. I'm gonna think about this one a little more. It just feels like everybody's gonna be off of it. And where did I have Beal on here? I have him at night. We have, like literally no one's gonna play Bradley Beal. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, good luck to you. I got snubbed from the All-Star game. We'll see what happens. Well, gonna, we know these Cleveland guys that we've been playing, you know what I mean? Like these guys are all really active. I mean, you play Sexton in this matchup, play Garland in this match. If you play freaking the other guy, who the Kevin Porter Jr. I yeah, mean, exactly. he can be really active in this matchup. It's a great matchup for them. And also, we don't know how they're going to play with this new coach. Like, it's, you know, who knows? <laughs> <clears throat> it's worth speculating on for sure. Anyway, Chief, I think we did a good a thorough co coverage. We'll do it. We'll do a FanDuel show after this, guys. So thanks so much for being. Please remember to like and subscribe. For Sheets, I'm Bobby saying we will talk to you later and uh, hit us up on Twitter with any questions for late breaking news. All right, fire this up and then